Hello and welcome to Dice and Demons. I'm Emma and in this video I want to show you how I paint my new Sylvaneth army and in this case a Kurnoth Hunter. So I start off with a model that's been primed using the White Scar, one of those new, newer <laughs> uh, uh, contrast primers they have. And uh, for the sort of the texture I think of as the skin on the uh, on the model, I use uh, one of the relatively new contrast paints, the Striking Scorpion Green. Uh, which I just love because it has such a nice vivid green color. Then for the larger parts of what you might call his armor, I use uh, another one of the relatively new uh, contrast paints. This one is Magma Droth Flame. And just as with the Striking Scorpion Green, I think this is really a nice vibrant color. And uh, yeah, uh, I mostly had perhaps chose this army just because I wanted an excuse to use these colors uh, all the time. Then for his, I don't know, his hair, his antlers, whatever you want to call it, I use a mix of a uh, contrast paint called Talasar Blue and then again the Striking Scorpion Green. And as you can see, I just do a really quick wet blend. I just uh, thought it would look nice if they had some sort of color transition on them um, because otherwise I think they might tend to get a little bit boring just with them being, you know, very long and very visible. Then for his color, as you might call it, uh, I did another wood blend, uh, this time using the Magma Droth Flame again. And then uh, a new, uh, one of the new yellow contrast paints, this one is called Imperial Fist. Uh, and as you can see, just as I did with his uh, antlers or hair or whatever, uh, it's just a really quick, easy wet blend. Um, nothing fancy. I, uh, I have decided I don't want, I wanted this to be like an entire army, so I wanted it to be something that I can see myself getting on the tabletop in a reasonable amount of time. So this is not, by any stretch of the imagination, a sort of, uh, you know, uh, a paint job that is going to win, uh, you know, any awards or anything, but something I'm going to be happy looking at when I put it on the tabletop. Then for his face, uh, I use a contrast paint called uh, Sigvold Burgundy, um, which is sort of purplish, purple, slash pinkish and I, I I really like it. It's got a very nice rich tone to it, um, which I think is really nice. I also use that for his feet and just to give a bit of variation in the color, I think, and then also on his sword because, uh, I mean, why not? <laughs> I've decided not to go for any metallic colors at all because this is a Sylvaneth army and I want him to be like sort of natural looking and well, naturalistic looking obviously with the color scheme um but no metallics or anything i want it all to sort of look like it comes from uh, psychedelic trees or whatever then for the trim around the armor um both here as you can see on his legs and also around his torso and stuff i use uh, one of the older contrast paints this one is called a Aethermatic blue uh, another uh, definite favorite of mine and i just use that uh, because i think it's a nice sort of uh, contrasting color both to the purple pinkish tones and also to uh, contrast with the uh, uh, with the orange armor as well and then the tiny leaves here you can see i gave um a coat of the bal red also uh, one of the newer contrast paints um the orange parts on his armor here look a little bit more reddish than they actually are in real life. So in real life, uh, the the colors here on the on the leaves uh, are a little bit uh, uh, sticks out a little bit more. Then to add some uh, contrast, because some some of these contrast paints, the new contrast paints particularly, don't really do the contrast effect. Um, so uh, I want to make sure that I add more, add more uh, texture and shadow and more visual interest to the piece. So I use a contrast paint called uh, Wildwood to uh, add both here, as you can see in the grooves that are already made in the armor. And also then just to add some sort of wood grain like texture to uh, an otherwise sort of flat piece of, of plastic. For the purple and blue and um, turquoise parts of the model. I use um, Terradon Turquoise, as a, which is also contrast paint, to add uh, these uh, shadows and give more of the wood grainy texture that I'm going for all over the piece. 
Then once I'm happy with all of that, I start adding in some highlights. And for the orange parts of the armor, I use a color called Laser Orange from Huge Miniatures. It's a fluorescent paint, uh, which I really like. I usually did uh, the whole thing where I mixed uh, fluorescent pigments with inks, which is still a, you know, a really nice way to go and will give you nice vibrant results. But this comes straight out of bottle and so it's easier to use. Um, S small disclaimer, uh, Huge Miniatures sent me these paints a while back uh, I did a review and everything and I still use them and that's just because, I mean, I, I really like them. <laughs> and for the green parts of the armor I took another uh, fluorescent paint from Huge Miniatures. This one is called Starfire Yellow and it, uh, it just adds a really nice... Uh, <laughs> very, very nice sharp highlights here. It's not as easy to see here on, on on the video but uh, but it really does then for the purple pink parts of the model i use a cyber pink also from huge miniatures and most of the time on a model such as this as i said this is i'm, I'm painting you know for an army project not for a display piece um so most of the model i'm not too careful with uh except here on the sort of face plate i I mean, that's probably where you sh your eyes will focus first and where, it, where you'll pay most attention. So that's why I, I devote a little bit more time and, and effort to that. But here on the feet, for instance, I just sort of, uh, I, I mean, try to be, I mean, relatively neat, but again, um, sort of matching uh, speed with... Uh, speed with quality so to say uh, i also highlight each highlight the entire sword and i mean this could i could have done this quicker but uh, for some reason it i just it felt so satisfying each highlighting all these little nooks and crannies so I, 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 I think i spent way too much time painting the sword but it was fun and i mean uh hobby is for having fun right so for the blue parts here i uh, highlight it with a um, mixture of white paint and a blaster blue also from huge miniatures also one of their fluorescent paints here on the video it basically just looks white but it's actually a light blue um just because i mean i could for this particular a part of the model i could use any type of blue mixed with white uh, but this is a fluorescent blue so it will glow under a uv light when it's done which i really really like so that's why <laughs> that's that i choose that particular paint then i go back over the orange armor using flash kits yellow just you know run of the mill completely standard yellow paint uh, just to highlight it a little bit further than just with the uh, just with the orange uh, paint and lastly, I took some of my favorite white paint, uh, the matte white from the Army Painter, and I did a, an edge highlight on all the uh, all the purple and blue and turquoise parts of uh, of the model. So I basically only have like three different highlighting uh, colors here. I have now four, perhaps. So I have the orange, I have the uh, yellow, and I have uh, light blue, light. Um, light pink and then I have the uh, the white so this is I mean I'm not using that many different colors actually even though my wife says that this particular <laughs> this particular color scheme sort of looks like I I, I went I, I don't know what colors to use so I'll just use every single one I've got but it's actually relatively simple and relatively easy to do and as you can see um, I mean it's really colorful. It looks like an, a color explosion, perhaps. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think it's fun and uh, and I like it. Um, so uh, so yeah. Um, and I just uh, I really wanted a sort of paint job that could be done, as I said, relatively quickly and would still look uh, nice on the tabletop. And uh, I think I'm I'm quite happy with the with the balance I've achieved with the with this color scheme here. And also, of course, as I said. A lot of the highlights were done using fluorescent paints, which means that the model uh, looks like this <laughs> when you see it under a UV light. And I know this is completely random and it's not necessary and it's, yeah, <laughs> it's just silly because, I mean, no one ever plays under a UV light. I, I certainly never have anyway, um, but it's just fun, you know, um, so, uh, so yeah. 
uh, that's uh, it, it's just an added bonus for me, and it's uh, nothing you have to go for if uh, just just uh, just for the sake of it. So uh, anyway, that's uh, that's how I am uh, painting my new uh, Sylvaneth army. So far, I've got now four painted Kurnoth hunters and ten dryads, and I'm working on the Lady of Vines. So uh, I'm uh, still nowhere near done, but it looks. It seems to me that it's actually possible that I'll be able to play at least uh, at the beginning of the new year or something. Um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. And I have I have other I have other projects also. So, but anyway, let me know what uh, what you think of this uh, of this project. What, what do you think of the colors? How do you think uh, it looks? And uh, also, by the way, what do you think of my idea for a new uh, for the uh, name of the army? I, I'm con I, I think I'm going to name them the. Uh, Vengeful veggies, uh, just you know, to make them fit in with my bubblegum boys and my uh, lollipop lizards. So there you go. Anyway, um, thank you so much for uh, watching this one. And uh, if you want to keep up to date on my painting projects and stuff, you can also follow me as Dyson Demons on Twitter and Instagram. So thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.